What is up guys? Zatkin here and in today's video I will be sharing with you exactly how to pull the pre-foreclosure and probate list free and absolutely online right now today. Guys, this is a live video. So if you have a market you want me to pull these lists in, I'm going to show you right here in Florida how I'm able with an internet connection where I'm able to go out here and pull this list absolutely for free for anyone really. And the main point of this video is for two main reasons, right? And I think for a lot of wholesalers out here, if you can get a really, really like a big action packed one, two punch type list that is free, easy, and really, in my opinion, that has the greatest urgency for wholesaling real estate success. I know a lot of people, they don't want to deal with uh, sellers that aren't urgent or they don't want to sell or everyone's going after this list, right? I'm going to show you a list where most wholesalers, honestly, they don't really go after this list too much. They, they don't go too crazy at this list. And uh, really, these lists are really motivated, right? And this is going to be the pre-foreclosures and the probate. So uh, the two P's in wholesaling real estate, because y'all know we're pushing P today. And when we're always pushing P, free gunna, obviously. And we are really going to do the big P's of wholesaling real estate. This is probates and pre-foreclosures. And really, that's what we're going to do. And we're really going to share exactly how to do it the right way. So what I'm going to do is give you a step-by-step -step guide. And really, y'all can just hear me talk about pre-foreclosures and probates all day. But why don't you just watch me do it live? And this is what I like doing, right? I like clicking the live button and unveiling the curtains of wholesaling real estate. And that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to show you exactly in, I think, under 60 seconds, the second biggest county in the entire, no, third biggest county in entire Florida pretty quick. And then I'll show you how under 60 seconds, how I'm able to hack that code really quick. And it's actually something you probably don't know about. And there's these secret hacks on how to pull the pre-foreclosure and probate lists that you're not going to know about. And also because these hacks I've been able to unlock for you guys, um, I can show you actually have liens and all the other fun stuff too. But we're going to focus mostly on pre-foreclosures and probates today. But really what I do is just show you how they work and really unveil the curtain because most gurus, again, I say this a million times, but it's true that they'll charge you thousands of dollars to learn this exact information I'm giving you absolutely for free. And this is what I want to do. I really want to give the knowledge to the people. Knowledge is going to be the power for you guys to become successful, right? A lot of this knowledge was out here being shunned and hidden away and the secret's coming out today. So I'm really excited. I'm really jacked up. I'm pumped up and I'm ready to go. So without further ado, uh, before we get into it, do us a big favor. You know, you already know what to do. Like I think everybody on here knows what to do, but just a reminder for y'all, make sure you smash that like button, hit that subscribe button, and most importantly, comment below your questions and I'd love to help you guys out. And without further ado, if you're excited, like if you're ready, I want everybody to get a tab open on their computer right now so we can kind of do this walkthrough right now of exactly what to do in wholesaling real estate so you actually know the entire steps for yourself. I think it's going to be really exciting for some people. So make sure you all get your computers, get your tabs open so you can follow me. And I'm going to try to go as detailed as possible. So you already know, before I get into it, I'm jacked up. I'm going to change lives. But most importantly, I got to get you jacked up. So how do I get you guys jacked up? How do you match my energy? We got a DJ. I mean, you know, just casual stuff. No other guru can do that. So let's get it going. It's wholesaling time, baby. Woo! Get the fuck out of bed, bitch. Go. Wake up, bitch, get up. Get up, get up, get up. Get up. Oh, 
snap. We're ready to go. Jeff's ready to rock and roll. Hazoo says, let's get the deals. We're ready to go. Juan's good to go. Everyone's ready. Steve, Ryan, y'all are out here ready to go, ready to get excited and really committing to getting his den right here, committing to get my first wholesaling deal this month. I love it. Let's get it going. So let's break it down. Let's get into it. And let's really share exactly how to get the pre-foreclosure and the probate list. But before I break it down, you know, we have a lot of questions and I, I think I want to answer this first. All right, let's get this ready here. All right. So let's answer the first question we got here. I just want to make sure we got all the tabs working, make sure the audio is good. So let's do one quick, let's do one quick audio check just to make sure everyone can hear me good and we'll be all set. I'd hate to do this without the audio going on, but the first questions we always have to ask ourselves is before we pull a list, we got to understand what the list we're pulling, right? And if we don't know the list we're pulling, ain't going to do well. All right. Is this going? Holy moly. We're paying a lot of money for ads on this channel. All right. All right. Yep. Audio is good. So the first question we have to ask ourselves before we pull the pre-foreclosure and the probate list is, first of all, what is a pre-foreclosure? I, I think this is the first question we have to ask. So before we pull the list, I want you guys to understand what the list really is so we can reverse engineer and actually figure out how we can actually pull it, right? So a pre-foreclosure, and this is a very rough guide to pre-foreclosures. Like this isn't, I, I want everybody to know, like this isn't like uh, the legal definition uh, per se, but this is a rough how my weird brain works is pretty much what a pre-foreclosure lead is going to be. It's going to be somebody that's behind on mortgage payments. Now, how much behind are, there, are they on mortgage payments? Every bank's different. Every mortgage is different. Every county, every stinking city sometimes different with this, right? Because the court and the proceedings with everything. But pretty much what you need to know is pre-foreclosures is basically a list of people that are not paying their mortgage payments, which is a mortgage. I think everyone knows what that is. But if you don't know, it's basically a loan you get to buy a house. So most people, when they buy a $300,000 house, they don't buy a house for 300. Uh, they put maybe 50, 60 grand down and then they get financing on it, right? And then they get mortgage payments. That's, I believe 70% of homes, up to 80% of homes have mortgages on them. And when you don't pay in a month and they don't pay the second month, you get angry letters from the bank. And then eventually you stop paying. Usually it's three to four payments I've seen. Now, sometimes a little more, sometimes a little less, but usually about the second or th second, third or fourth payment they're going to start the pre-foreclosure process. Now, uh, we actually at freeholcing.com have some really cool handy charts. So I'm going to go into freeholcing.com to show you. And not to go tell you that freeholcing.com is the best free real estate wholesaling course on the planet because you already know it is. But just to show you that in freeholcing.com, we literally have everything you possibly need to know on exactly how to really do everything. So uh, right here, we actually have our pre-foreclosure section at freeholcing.com. And I'm just going to pop up a gr big graphic wave at freeholcing.com. Not to, I, I, everyone's in freeholcing.com. So I think y'all already understand that. Oops. We got the background for the podcast today. We do no podcast today. All right. So this is basically the pre-foreclosure process. Okay. And I want people to understand we are at freeholcing.com. So this is kind of where we're at. These are the modules, everything like that. No guru can even come close to this stuff, but on the bottom right-hand corner, uh, freeholcing.com. Now, if you look at the pre-foreclosure process, this is basically what a pre-foreclosure is. Now, a pre-foreclosure really starts with a couple stages. We have the pre-pre-foreclosure. This is basically one to three months, one to three missed payments, angry letters from the bank. They're going, rah, 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 I'm angry at you, blah, blah, blah. Start, start paying, start paying. This technically hasn't started any problem. No, nothing has really started, right? Uh, they're just being angry at you, right? And obviously, if you don't pay for two months, you're going to have to pay the two months on the third uh, for them not to be angry with you anymore. But the bank's going to be angry, right? And so nothing really happens the first three months. And unfortunately, uh, 120 days, so this is going to be month four usually, the pre-foreclosure process starts. And this is when the bank starts doing some crazy stuff. They do what we call a notice of default. Sometimes they'll even put a list pendants on the property. And this is all legal terms. You don't really have to understand too much to get started on pulling this list. 
But pretty much what it is, it's showing the court system that, hey, we are formally starting the process of taking the asset over the property because the person that we've given the loan to has not paid it. And so we're just taking the property back and that's what they're doing just to protect themselves. And when you sign a mortgage, you agree that if I don't pay that you guys can take, basically you can take it, the property back. So about 120 days. Now, everybody thinks after the fourth payment, the sheriff comes in day 120, kicks you out of the house, leaves you on the street, and you're screwed, right? It doesn't happen like that. It's actually a very decently long process. Um, I've seen people stay in a house for two years from a pre-foreclosure. And because of the panoramic, there's people still three years in, right? So everywhere's a little different. But you don't hit the pre-foreclosure process until the notice of default has happened. Now, a foreclosure is at the end here, and we'll talk about the end really quick, but a foreclosure is basically when the bank just literally takes it over. Like the bank owns it now, it's foreclosed. It's, it's basically closed, but they don't have it anymore, right? Now, there's this little thing here, and you see pre-foreclosure right here, and then you see auction date set. There's a little thing in the between. So when they do the notice of default, they go through the court process, and then the courts basically for a couple months, three to four months, maybe, maybe in two months, uh, the court's like, okay, got it, perfect. We are setting the auction date, and this is the date that the property is being auctioned off. And the bank will auction off. They just the bank just wants their money. They, they don't really care about the asset. Now sometimes the bank takes it if the auction if it doesn't get auctioned for the right amount, but uh, sometimes the bank will just take it over without an auction. But there's usually a date set where the property is going to change hands, and the person's got to get out usually during the auction date. Now. Between the pre-foreclosure and the auction date or the date that the bank's taking over the property, the date where like it's it's the end date, right? Top, clock's ticking. There's this thing where we call the wholesaling window of time. Now, the wholesaling window of time is between the pre-foreclosure, all these court filings, and the date the person's getting out of the property. There's this wholesaling window of time on where we can actually pull the list, sign a contract with the seller, get it assigned to a cash buyer, and get it sold, right? Because sometimes you never know with a pre-foreclosure, maybe the, it gets auctioned really bad. And maybe the seller doesn't get as much money as they want. They have to go through the shame of an auction, eviction. All, they, a lot of people don't want to do that, right? This is also what we call the short sale time window. And 95, maybe even 97% of properties aren't going to be in this short sale time window. So don't worry about that. But uh, if you have a short sale, which basically means the property, there's more owed on what the thing's actually worth. So really any property bought in the lot past three months that no one's paying on, which there's obviously those situations, that'd be a short sale, but that's for a different day. And then basically auction date, once the auction date's set, it's a lot harder to save the deal, but you still still can. Most sellers will want to sell the deal like a week before the auction date. And there's it's very hard to do that, right? Now, the last part here is the foreclosure auction or REO. REO. REO is real estate owned. Pretty much that means the bank owns the property. Now, I'm not the expert on this. I'm not the legal. Seek an attorney, lawyer, whatever, if you want to get the perfect terms for it. But uh, basically, the bank wants to sell for what is owed at the minimum. Most sellers will deal with you three to seven days before the auction. Sometimes there's a redemption periods, which means the person can take back the property. But that's very rare. That's mostly for tax. you not paying taxes, but that's... For, for most people, you don't have to worry about that. But just so we understand what a pre-foreclosure is. Now, I know this is in excruciating detail, but I want you guys to understand what type of list you're pulling. Because when we understand what the list is, this makes me understand a little more of what I'm pulling because I don't want you guys pulling a pre-foreclosure without actually understanding what you're pulling. I think a lot of newbie wholesalers actually uh, do this. And I think you need to be knowledgeable for the process because you're dealing with people and their families and you want to help them out. And really it's, I know it sounds naive for me to say, but like, it's not that complicated once you get like really into it. And once you start understanding it now, we have a full two hour breakdown of it. And I don't want to get in the full break, like legal breakdown today on it, but just, I, I want you all to understand that we have it up for wholesaling.com that that's where the, the best information of it and all the module stuff like that is there. Now, Speaking of freehosting.com, the question is, what is a probate, right? And this is a question best answered by Rick, right? But like a probate is, now I'm butchering the legal terms and the lawyers on here are going to absolutely have a field day with me. And my lawyer basically always tells me uh, to tell everyone to seek legal advice, all this stuff. Don't sue me. All right. Don't sue me, bro. But 
really what a probate is, is is the legal process of determining the ownership of a property or the legal process of the commencement of assets or whatever is in an estate or will when someone passes away, which in layman terms basically means when somebody passes away, the property doesn't instantly go to the next affair. This isn't like king or queen, okay? This isn't like, oh, you know, uh, the father died, and so the son now is automatically king. Here's the coordination. We have the whole fancy ser- No, all right? Somebody passes away. Somebody doesn't automatically get the property unless their name's in the deed. You have to go through a court process, and so the judge has to be like, all right, is there a will? Who is next of kin? Who gets this house? Because if you pass away and you have a million dollar house, like who gets the house? Do I get the house? I'm not related to you, but can I get the house? No. Hey, the son gets the house. Even if there was any, um, even there is any will or anything, like it usually goes to next of kin or a family member or something like that. Uh, so the probate process can get a little daunting, but uh, the legal definition is probate. Pretty much if somebody passes away, that's the way we're doing it, right? Uh, probate is the analysis and transfer administration of an estate's assets previously owned by a deceased person. So that's pretty much what it is. So really what this means for us in wholesaling real estate, how we can actually make money in wholesaling is if somebody passes away, usually the heirs, they don't want to own or live in the house. Okay. Like there's a lot of emotional attachment with the property and really they just want to get rid of it. And a lot of these properties are just sitting for a while and they just want to get rid of the property and the sons and daughters and the heirs and they a lot of them live out of state and they just don't want to deal like can we just get i hate to say it but like they, they care about the some personal possessions in the house but to be honest they just want the money for the house they don't really care about the house kind of like a pre-foreclosure and so if you can offer a quick cash sale and they don't have to deal with the stressful probate process and they just want to get rid of the situation which a lot of people are you're good to go now, I want everyone to understand 95% of probates should want the most of the house. What does that mean? So if, you know, someone's aunt passes away and, you know, the, the niece gets the property, it's a half a million dollar house. 95% of the time, the niece just, hey, I want the most of the house. I want the most money. Money's all I care about. And really, I don't care about getting, I just want money. I want the most money. I want a realtor. I want to go. Th- that's okay. That's honestly that's most people. And I have no problem with that. Now, if the aunt had this disgusting, decrepit rental property that is just disgusting, it's worth like a hundred K it needs all this work and they just, just want to get the cash. They don't want to deal with it. It could be a good deal. Like, okay. And really that means 5% of the probate list is up for grabs for us. And I would say probably 10, 15 for pre-foreclosures. And really that means most of these deals aren't going to be good for wholesaling, but if you can deal with the 5%, that's a lot. That's a lot of deals because you get 100 pre-foreclosures in a month. That's up to 15 leads you can get. And if you get uh, 100 probates, that's like five really good leads, which one of those is going to be a good deal. The reason why I love probates so much is there's a lot of motivation with them. And not everyone's a deal, but the ones that are deals are huge ones, right? Like we had Benji yesterday. Hop on. Shout out to Benji. Uh, he closed after five months a $50,000 assignment fee. He had a check. Check out the live stream yesterday. 50 stinking thousand dollars. Fifty thousand dollar check to him. Amazing. All right. So shout out to Benji. You know, shout out to him. And he's a big reason why I decided to live today. I'm like, you know what? If Benji make 50K, how about we help you make 50K too? Okay. We just don't want to help him out. All right. Um, but like, guys, if somebody can watch this video and just start pulling the probates, I promise you it's worth it. Maybe 50 people are going to start signing it. They don't want to. And the reason why, because we had Benji hop on did 50 care and, and then we had John hop on yesterday and John, uh, I think he's in New Jersey. He was like, at no fault to him, but like, he was like, uh, I can't pull the probates in Toledo. It's impossible. I'm virtual. I can't do it. And he had that in his mindset. And basically what I did was I just literally, this is another reason why I decided to was live today. I just literally popped up Lucas County, click on the court. Boop, 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 boop. Did my little hacking thing and I shared on my screen and I pulled the probates for him. And I'm like, see, you can pull the probates too. And that was a huge mindset shift for him. Like, wait, I can pull the probates liens online for free. Really simple. Cause his biggest concern was, Hey, there's so much saturation in this market. I'm like, it's not saturated. You're just, your marketing's off. Like you're going after the, you're in the same pond as every other wholesaler. 
There's like 50 ponds over here that no one's fishing in. There's a ton of fish in them. Why are you going after the pond that everyone's at? And that really shifted his process. And so now we're getting the important questions, you know. What's the process to pull probates? Like, how do I do this? And everyone, I get people excited, right? And the reason why I get you excited because I've shared, I've shared some $100,000 deals I've done in wholesaling real estate and 95% of them have been probates. And this is why I love telling people they're probates. And I feel like I'm selling you a probate course. Like I feel like I'm selling you a, a this thousand dollar program, hop on a discovery call, but like, it's free. Like I got nothing to sell you. Okay. So, you know what? I got you guys excited. I, I got you guys pumped up. So let's just, let's just get into it. Right. Let, let, let's just get in. So I kind of told you what it is. Uh, School of hard knocks. You can't pull probates in Kansas. That's a shocking. Cause I helped, uh, Corey Casey, she pulled probates and we helped her do it. And I did it live in front of her. Uh, you can pull probates in Casey. School of Hard Knocks. You have something, men you have a mental barrier in your head right now of why you can't do it. This is my favorite one. You can't pull probates here. You can't pull probates here. You can't do this. You can't. The can't mentality is the worst thing that plagues wholesalers. I can't do it. I can't get this deal. I'm not good enough. I can't do it. All right, I'm gonna be this. I'm gonna do this really nicely for you, School of Hard. I'm not saying this is mean, but like, as long as people are passing away, there will be a probate. There's million dollar houses in Kansas, and people aren't just picking them up for free. Okay, people, are, the heirs get them. There's a probate court, and so let me do one quick proof. Okay, probate court, Kansas. Uh oh, oh snap. And so I just want to show everybody here, just so we can kind of dispel the myth that there's no probates in Kansas. And I know a lot of you guys don't even think Kansas exists, but here's a website from the Kansas Judicial showing proof that, oh, there's probates are real in Kansas. Shocker. There's, that's just proof really quick that probates are real there. So it's kind of funny. All right. So now we know what a probate is. So let's break down why we have to do this list, right? So pre-foreclosures, they're motivated. You get really good deals. Pre-foreclosures, I just want you guys to understand with the marketing, they're not good cold calling lists. They're really good for reverse drawing for dollars and texting uh, and some direct mail because they keep getting hammered with loan charts. People, probates are good for cold calling though. So a little yang in the yang, one for virtual, one for in-person. So I kind of been talking about this forever. Let's get into actually how to pull the list, right? So how do we do this? Now, I want everybody to watching this. Let's start working with me here. I want you guys to just do this, okay? Let's, uh, let's write this down, all right? County. All right, let's do this. I want you guys to make two tabs. So I want everybody, whatever market you're in, whatever virtual market you're in, I want everybody to do this with me, okay? So we can do this together. I want y'all to put your county in there or your municipality, parish, if you're in Louisiana, whatever it is, put your county probate court and just click search. Go to Google. So if you're in Toledo, right? Lucas County probate court. And then the other tab, put whatever county clerk of court. That's all you got to put, all right? Like, for 95% of people on here, 99, honestly, that's probably what it's going to be, okay? So let's the people get that for a second. Let's search it up, and we'll do it. Now, it's not as complicated, complicated as it seems, okay? And now, Trevor says the foreclosure sales are posted on the newspaper. That's great, but we want to get the pre-foreclosure before they're even posted because it's a little harder when it, when it is, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here into Google, and I'm going to search the Palm Beach, Palm Beach probate court. All right. So now we're here and I just searched the Palm Beach, actually my bad, county probate court. Now there's the first one here and we'll just search this one. This is probate of estates. Uh, now we are in the probate court here. So I'm just doing Palm Beach County and I kind of even know how to, I remember pulling this a while back. 
because I got VAs doing it, but let's uh, we're doing this live. So we're all going to figure this out together. So uh, this kind of talks about probates and how they work and the laws, which is kind of pretty cool. But um, right here, I can do so the clerk of the court is actually already in the probate section, which is actually pretty easy for me. So basically what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go there's here search now official records or court records. Now, there's two of them in Palm Beach. So it's whatever one you really want to do. In my personal opinion, I actually like the public records are actually the easiest, but it's up to you. So uh, I'm, let's search. Let's do court records first. I know for a fact public records are going to have it, but let's just do the public records. I'm not a robot. Submit it. So here's the biggest issue we have. This is where most wholesalers get stumped when it comes to pulling probates. Oh, shoot. I want to search the case, but it's going to probably require me a name, right? And that's not good. And so we can go to case type. So court types, I'm going to go to probate and case type. I can do any type of probate. I'm going to keep all the probates on here. Now, the coolest part is I can do probates that are over $1,000 or under, which is kind of nice. Uh, but file date, let's just do, um, do the year, but. Let's just do 1201 to 1222, 12, All right. So we just put past 21 days kind of on this, and I'm just going to click search. And so, oh, okay. It popped up pretty easy. All right. So uh, basically what popped up here, I'll put my face away from this. Uh, but pretty much uh, it pulls the probates. And pretty much what this is, there's open probates, closed probates, all this fun jazz. Now, I'm in Florida. So you already know we got a lot of old people in Florida. So there's a lot of probates. Uh, it's the probate, pretty much the probate capital of the world of uh, in the United States. But pretty much uh, I go through here. It looks like here that a Leo Presser died, unfortunately. So I'm going to click case number here and really get some information. Uh, this is guardianship probate party names. All right. So decedent right here is Leo Presser. Judge. So we got two petitioners. And so petitioner, personal representative, those are most likely going to be the heirs. And so these are going to be the people that are wanting the property. Now, this is the person that passed away. Now let's go to documents and cases and see if I can get some more information about it. Uh, let's see. So it looks like Cheryl Rubin and Deborah Goldwasser paid for the funeral bill. So they want the, they want the will. Okay, so interesting. Court events, case info. Do I get any more? I'm not getting too much info. And unfortunately, you don't really get too much info with a lot of these things. So, all right, no big deal. So all I know that if that Leo Presser died. So I don't have the PR's information here, which is fine. Not the biggest thing in the world. Can I click these? No, that's not going to work. Um, all right. So basically what I can do here is I can just figure it out. So I looked at the Leo Presser guy died. So all I'm going to do is just search the Palm Beach County Clerk of the Court. Okay. So let's go to Palm Beach. Actually, property appraiser. So we're going to see if the guy even owned property. So all I'm going to do is search this dude. That passed away, unfortunately. Uh, where's party names? All right. Got Leo Presser. Mm. Yeah, it looks like he doesn't own any property there, so no big deal. We can go to the next one. Oops. All right, let's go search criteria, search results. So I click search. Go back here to search results. Let's go here to this person. All right. Party names. It looks like, so this is a little easier because it looks like an Adeline uh, Borgia passed away and that a Carl Borgia is the petitioner. So that makes it actually a lot easier. Okay. Because once you know that, it's definitely a family member or someone related, which is fine. So all I'm going to do is put them in the property appraiser and see what we get. Um, 
Looks like there's an Anna Adriana. All right. I can't get specifics on this one. So I'm just going to keep search. Honestly, I'm just going to search these and see if any of them pop up. So Marsha Cutler. There we go. All right. So right here, Marsha Cutler. I searched it up on the property appraiser. Seems like she owns some real estate. And so all I'm going to do is go here. And so it was Marsha Cutler. So where is it? Marsha and Arthur Trust. So they own this house in Boynton Beach, Florida. So we got this one. So this is the piece of real estate. So it's already in a trust, which is fine. They own the property since 2002. Jeez. All right. So this property is assessed for 324. So my guess is worth probably half a million. Let's see if I got that right or not. I'm just guessing Zill has it for half a million. And so unfortunately with this property here. Okay, y'all, y'all gonna imagine that I like I I'm y'all gonna think I scripted this. It's basically under it, Zillow is at half a million. Now they got it for 525. And unfortunately, this is part of the 95% of probates that just listed it instantly. I mean, heck, the probate pro, the probate got filed today and it's already on the market, which is kind of crazy. But this is probably because the husband probably lived there, so he he could have done it. Usually they couldn't really do too much on it. But yeah, just like for example, looking at this probate pro property, like the decent house right here, right? Not bad. So unfortunately, like you see this house. This is not a property that looks inducive for a probate. I think everybody knows that. Like you don't see this and you're like, oh, this is a this is a motivated property right here, right? Like, no. Okay. Like, look at this thing. Three two. 1700 square feet. I mean, the kitchen's a little outdated, but it's really clean. And a lot of older people are very clean with their property. So, I mean, there's not much we can do there. We're looking here. I mean, eh, I don't really see much here. Like, I just look in here. I mean, ugh, this is a mess. I mean, it's too nice of a property, right? Like, this is not something we want to wholesale. So, uh, we don't like that. No big deal. A little clubhouse right there too. That is not definitely not a wholesaling deal that we want to be doing. But I go through the probates all day. That's pretty much what it is. Now, Jason, like some of these probates are filed like weeks, like literal weeks before the probates even filed. The ugly houses usually aren't like that, so I, I wouldn't really get too concerned over that. But always a little interesting when I see that, right? But hey, no big deal. So. Uh, let's go back here to the probate. So, I mean, it's pretty simple, guys, right? Like, we're going here. I look at the property. I look up the uh, property appraiser. And so, for example, if I wanted to do this, I got the party names. So, it looks like a Mitchell Cutler is the trustee. And so, if I want to go mail to him, right? So, all I'm really going to do is just search Mitchell Cutler. And there's a couple of ways I can do a skip. I can skip trace Mitchell Cutler. Um, now the docket's information is not giving me his information, which is fine. Uh, usually you sometimes can get it if you, honestly, let's actually do another hack. Let's, um, let's go to the public records and see if we can actually find something from there. So let's go back here. Hold on. I'm going to search Palm Beach County, County public records. All right. So. Y'all can see here, I am, ooh, all right, hold on. There we go. All right, so this is Palm Beach County Public Records. So I literally just do the first thing that pops up. Now, you remember, I, we just played through the court records. Let's go through official records. And going through official records, most likely name's the best one, but it's probably going to win a name, and that kind of stinks. So it needs a name required. So we're just going to go back here. And what we really want to do instead is just go by document because documents can be the best one because we want to search by type of document. Let's see if this gives me a, a waiting screen. Yeah. All right. So I'm just going to do uh, name. Oh my gosh. Come on. This is your government at work guys. All right. So doc. So I'm going to go by document type instead. Now, now it wants the document type, which is fine. Right? I think so. All right, let's try it out. Let's go to probate. 
All right, cool. Yeah, that worked out. Let's do probates in the last 30 days. I'm not a robot, I promise you. And click submit. Okay, so this is a little easier. All right, so this is going to not be the court records, but the public records for the probates. So I can get a little more information from it. And pretty much what I can do here is uh, just search. Like I can get real info. So uh, let's just click this one randomly. This is from the Nick Nicole Christine guardianship. So I could see Nicole Christine passed away. Now, Florida's got some interesting laws with public records specifically. Um, so unfortunately with this one, I actually have to visit the county office to actually see the document. But the uh, Florida law has something about viewing stuff on the internet. Now, some counties don't have this, but some do. They're very weird with it. But you can't see it uh, on the internet but you can go in person and get it. I want people to understand that. Uh, so no big deal. I can go back here. And so I can go back to document type. Let's try a lean really quick and just see. Oops. Did that work? And no big deal. All right. So the probates will actually show me on them. But the one thing you got to understand is so like, let's go back to probates really quick. Whoa. Oh my gosh. It's the last seven days. Beautiful. All right. So let's try Gordon Samuel estate. So this stuff won't pop up, but here's the one thing I want y'all to understand. That's pretty cool that because this stuff's not popping up, but the legal documents right here. And what does that mean? The parcel ID is actually right. So I can click this link. Does it give it to me? Oh, wow. That's really cool. Hold on. No, it just gives me a link to the property appraiser, which kind of stinks, but whatever. All right. But it gives me the, 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 the property right here. So I can just copy this property, go to the property appraiser, paste it in, and it'll pop up. Tangible real property. And boom, it'll give me the property address there. So that's pretty cool. Uh, and I'll give you some info on that. Now, you can go through the public records for other things too. It gets a little more difficult, but like that's pretty easy to do. Um, Raquel says, what about non-disclosure states? Non-disclosure states have nothing to do with probates. Non-disclosure states have to do on the price of a property selling. So um, I think you're confused on what a non-disclosure state is. Non-disclosure states, they don't disclose the sell, the sold price on the MLS. Not the sold price, not, not the information. that They can't, this information actually has to be public. So no. So yeah, it's a private corporation for non-disclosure. So because the MLS technically, so they can do that. They can't do it with the, with the public courts. Just so you know that. All right. And so if I want to change this up, so let's kind of make this a little bigger. Since we're already in here. How do I pull other type of lists, right? I can go here. I can do assignment, bond, certificate. So uh, you can assign contracts and publicly do those. Weird. Shocker, right? There's court papers. Heck, there's even, I, I don't want to get into it, but like there's death certificates. So I can just search this. And for the past seven days, it'll actually literally give me death certificates. People that officially died. And a lot of these have to do with probates. So like with this one, so this is going to be uh, technically for Pamela Franklin's death certificate. And that's pretty cool. I mean, not cool, but y'all know what I mean there. Right, let's go back to document type. Now, oops. All right. Now we can go here. What other categories we got? Easements. Don't care about that. Judgment and lien's pretty cool. Mortgage is not really that interesting for us. Restrictions tax liens, terminations, all this stuff. So if I got to pull the pre-foreclosure list, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go here to list pendants. And this isn't for every property, but I can tell you that list pendants are going to be for most pre-foreclosures. Now, how do I do this? I can go by, so we have a list pendants. So a lot of these sometimes with construction companies and other type of liens, but that list pendants is that court action for the pre-foreclosure. Now, sometimes maybe you owe me money in business disputes and other stuff like that, which isn't that. 
But like, let's do this one. So these less pendants are actually HOA liens, which are actually pretty cool. But all I got to do is look for a loan company. So shocker, found it. Pretty easy. So Rocket Mortgage and Quicken Loans. So pretty much Quicken Loans is, I mean, it used to be the Cavaliers place, right? But like Quicken Loans is basically a, oh, where, what happened? Hold up. There we go. All right. Quicken Loans is basically a place that gives mortgages out. It's a bank. So anytime you see Chase Bank, Bank of America, uh, Citibank, usually that's either credit card debt lien list or a mortgage. Now this is pretty simple, but because the case type has a property associated to it. And so let me show you really quick. Since this case type has a case number of property, Frenchman's Landing, and it's got L sub two landing PCN. This is a piece of real estate where uh, it looks like John Paul, uh, Barry Paul estate passed away. Oh snap. This is a, Oh, this is a probate and a pre foreclosure at the same time. What guys? I, I, I impress myself. Sometimes my genius outwits myself. I didn't know it actually. All right. I didn't know this was a thing. Uh, I didn't know I was going to pull this today. That's pretty cool. I did a probate and a pre foreclosure because someone passed away. No one paid the loan, the mortgage. Oh snap! Let's click that. Let's get some. Let's get some hot information on this. This is getting spicy. I like this. All right. This is money right here. Okay. Okay. This is getting me excited. I'm my blood. My blood's getting excited. But if my team did not pull this list, because this list got pulled um, yesterday. If my VAs did not pull this yesterday and we're not calling this person right now, I'm going to, I got to fire some VAs. I, I'm pretty sure my team pulls it every day. So this one, our team should have already been cold calling it. So it's fine. We're probably skip tracing it now, but whatever. Um, they're not going to be happy that I'm giving this out information, but pretty much since this is a probate, um, the public information is pretty easy here. And so all I got to look here is quick and loans. They do it. So, it looks like that Barry Paul passed away and that John Paul Pitts is the PR. And so he's actually the representative for it. And so they are trying to put a lien. Actually, no, they're trying to take the property back from John Paul Pitts. who's probably getting the property, right? And so pretty sad, but oh my gosh, what do I do? So all we got to do is, so it's uh, Rocket Mortgage LLC, pretty much versus the unknown heirs, beneficiaries, of uh, his estate and pretty much, and it looks like there's tenants in the property too, which is very interesting. Okay. So everyone's like, what, what's the, what's the address? So we're going to keep looking here. So the address basically is this lot 82 plot one Frenchman's landing, blah, blah, blah. It gives the address two, five, six, seven Bordeaux court, Palm beach garden. So let's see if that's on the market. Two, five, six, seven. Bordeaux. Yeah, y'all know I speak speak French. Not really. But but pretty much what it is here, so right here. 2567 Bordeaux Court. Boom, boom, boom. Decent property right here, too. But like, boom, not on the market. That's a really good lead I just pulled right here, right? Like, this is leads that are just sitting there, guys. Like it's a it's a double whammy. I like, I like, bruh, this is a pre foreclosure and a probate. It's like peanut butter and jelly. They just go together for wholesaling deals. Right. And it's funny that no guru ever talks about like these type of leads, right? They'll tell you, Oh yeah, just buy my course. Oh, just, just send 5,000 direct mailers out here. And you know, you don't have to worry about anything. Right. Come on. It's a good deal right there. But holy mo I get a lot of deals like that. I didn't know, but this was literally pulled yesterday. So like pretty quick, like pretty quick, like this just happened. And I think y'all got to be going after these leads. Look at that. Oh my gosh. I'm getting excited. And so let's go here. So pretty much uh, that's the property. So day of the 19th of December, we even have the attorneys doing the lawsuit and everything like there. So, Beautiful money, 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 money. Oh, I love it. And so I just keep going here. So PHH mortgage 
a corporation. And so they are suing this. So let's go here and look at it. Like, guys, when was this filed? Let's look at this. Uh, we can, this was... E, uh, let's look at this. Come on. Is it scrolling? All right. Virginia L. Summers is being sued from a mortgage corporation. This is most likely a pre-foreclosure. I can't get the full information. Let's look at the next one here. So 210 Southwest 17th Street. So let's look at, uh, let's see here. This was since August, but it looks like it got recorded today. So that's weird, but whatever. Uh, 210 Southwest 17th Street. And then this would be Boynton Beach, Florida. Nice. All right. So look at this. Not even on, not on the market. Just sitting there. Ooh, look at that. Look at that. Ooh, three, two. The average piece of real estate in Palm Beach County. Let's look at this. Palm Beach median home price. Zillow. The average price in Palm Beach County. Is half a million dollars. Wow. All right. Half a million. And we got a property right here. 300,000 in a pre-foreclosure situation. Woo! Guys, like, that's money right there. And it literally just got done yesterday at 234. Not even 24 hours old, this information. Okay. So your competition most likely hasn't gotten to this yet. And so y'all ask me, like, how do I beat the competition? How do I get a leg up on them? Pull this, right? Like, this is great info. Like, I go on and on forever on this, right? Let, let's pull one more really quick, and then we can go on the next one. I think y'all get the gist of it. Um, but uh, community loan servicing, pretty simple. Uh, wait. Community loan servicing. Uh, let's see here. They're doing a confusing one here, but whatever. What's the address? All I'm just going to search is Elizabeth scene, and then I can see where she owns it, and then it'll be kind of easier to do from there. And uh, we have actually have the parcel ID, so perfect. And that's where it pops up there. Now, I can go back here, right? I can go, and since we're back here, we can search other things. So, for example, I can go after liens. So, people that are behind on just liens. So, there's a lot of liens out here, right? So, for example, this is Lake Worth on Jonathan Cranler. Let's see what this lien's about. Oh, look at this. That's a probate. I know that's a code violation. Look at that. So city of Lake Worth has a code violation lien on this property. That's pretty cool. Whoa. So all I do here is look at this. So it looks like on dumpster, uh, there's trash on the street. There's landscape, tall grass. Oh my gosh. Look at this. This is money right here. And so they, they threw a lien on this property right here. Uh, 10 federal highway. So that's pretty cool. And five seventy seven a day. So let's see here. That's interesting. All right. Yep. Lean signed out. Boom. Yeah, you get leans here. Uh, heck, let's keep going. You can even do power of attorney now. Tax liens. People behind on tax. Like people not paying their taxes. You get a lot of stuff right here, right? So guys, this information is actually really simple to pull. Like it's really not that difficult to do for a lot of counties. Now, if this information is not as easy to get for you, I would probably go to the probate clerk of the court, the probate for the county or the clerk of the court and actually call them up and ask how I can get this information. And they will probably have to walk through. Sometimes you have to go in person to do it, right? So just depends on which one you want to do, but you should be able to pull these pretty easy. So that, guys, is how you pull the pre-foreclosure and the probate list.
Uh, let me know if you need help with it or if you got a place or a, you know, a certain area you want me to try to pull it, I'll try it. Now, if I can't pull it, you're probably going to have to call and see how to do it the right way uh, or you have to go in person for it, but eventually you'll get the information. So there's a quick tip for everyone. The harder it is to pull a list, it's actually better for you in wholesaling because that means less wholesalers can get this information, okay? I mean, think about it. If I can pull a pro, if I can pull the probate list in under 60 seconds to get amazing info like that, pretty much every wholesaler can. And after thousands of wholesalers are going to be watching this video right now, and they're going to have access to this information too, you, you want to get something that's a little more difficult to do, right? And so historically, um, I, I, I don't want to say this in any political way, but like the more, bl uh, the more blue your state's going to be, uh, the harder it is to get this information. Um, and usually the more um, red the state is of how they voted, um, usually the easier it's going to be. And this isn't for anything like, that's not like a political statement, but that's what I've seen. So historically, California has been very difficult to pull probate lists and very difficult to actually pull. Uh, Arkansas is actually kind of difficult too, um, to actually pull the public records for things. You can, but it's a lot more difficult. And if I got a state like, I don't know, um, just think of an easy state. I mean, Tennessee is pretty easy. Now, Tennessee can get very difficult too. Tennessee actually, sorry, I take that back. Parts of Tennessee are actually really hard. I would say like, no, I can't even use that one. Um, say Ohio. Ohio is pretty, like I go to uh, the Montgomery County, boop, 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 get it pretty easy, right? Now I did Lucas County, Ohio. That's pretty easy. And then some, there's some blue states are actually really easy to do. Uh, for example, here, I've actually had a lot of success with, uh, the state of New Hampshire. Yeah, I, I don't want to bring that up too much, but New Hampshire is actually pretty easy for me for uh, doing it pretty good. Georgia is easy too. Um, some are harder, some are easier, but sometimes you go in person, right? And then that's pretty much it. So uh, if guys got any questions, want me to help you with the list, let me know. Uh, but yeah, I can tell you guys, the more difficult it is for a list, the actual easier it is uh, for you to get better deals from that list. So uh, let's answer some quick questions we got and see how I can help the people out. And let's get it going. Steve says, drawing for dollars right now, practicing my lateral passing. <laughs> oh, poor Steve. You know, I watched that game and, you know, watching Mac Jones, Jones get stiff-armed and just pummeled to lose a game was, it, it felt good in my heart. You know, my, my heart was full in happiness. And um, it, it didn't make up for the Bills game for me, but it helped. You know, it helped. It's like, you know, hurting yourself, but getting some Advil, like it just, it eased the pain and watching the Pat Patriots lose in such stupid fashion felt good. It felt really good. And then, um, can't lie. The, the Jets was pretty nice too, but, um, I'm just a Dolphins fan. You, you know what we do there, but yeah. So yeah, guys, these leads are spicy. You gotta be pulling these leads. I'm telling you they're it's very powerful list to be pulling. And uh, it's very good. Let's see. I'm telling you, probates are goaded. Uh, so let's see. Can you pull a list of Cobb and Fulton? Um, sure. Uh, I'll do it pretty quick. Cobb. And this better be difficult for me because if this is difficult, we're going to have an issue. So I just searched Cobb County uh, Court. Is this Georgia? This is Superior Court. Courts. Um, court rules. Hold up. Let's do Cobb County Probate Court. All right. So we are in the Cobb County Probate Court. <sighs> Court records. Click here for probate estate information. Court types, estates. Don't care about that. 
And so right here, these are all of the probates for Cobb County. So you're going to have to go through all these and go by dates and everything. Um, I wish it helped you filter it a little more, but is this better be by date? That's 1907. That's not going to be good. So let's go to last. That should help. 1888. That ain't good. Okay. That's an L. Um, all right. Let's try that again. Court types. Um, let's do by case number. That might actually help. 1905. Yeah, I'm going by open, so I got to figure out where the where the, all the opens are on this one. But these are them. Yeah, they got a lot of info here. All right, we are going to filter this out even more. Why do they have ones from the 1900s still on here? It's fine. All right. Let's do estates. Jeez Louise. So I'll just ask him how to do that from there. That's kind of old. But um, let's see here. Let's do... Okay, here we go. Probate. Holy moly, where are we at? Okay, hold on. We're looking. A lot here. There is oath, name change, jury pool, there's foreclosure. There you go. Appeal to a probate court. What? Stalking, I'm gonna do stalking. Hmm. Looks like I don't want to do there, so we'll just do pop pop. Yeah, so honestly, civil cases. So the way I did there is probably going to be the best one, honestly, unfortunately. So search court records. No. Book and page. So yeah, you're going to have to you're just going to have to sift through this thing. And that's going to be the best. Unfortunately, uh, you're going to have to go through there until you find the 2022s and then go from there. They're making it a little difficult, but that's the best way to find it from there. So boom. All right. So pull that one. All right. So let's do some uh, one-on-ones. Uh, let's see how I can help the people out. If y'all got any questions, let me know. Let me hop on here. Holston analysis for real. If you want to hop on here, talk to me one-on-one -on -one for free. All y'all got to do is go here. Holston analysis for real. Click here. Streamer link is right here to join and you can hop on, talk to me absolutely for free. So uh, let's see how I can help the people out. Uh, first one we got. Yo. Morning, Zach. What's up? Good. How about you? 
I'm blessed, man. How can I help you out today? Yeah, I have the same list, actually, pre-foreclosures and probates, and I have a quick question. So I have a pre-foreclosure that's like 56 miles away or an hour away from me. Is it okay to make an offer on the phone rather than in person? Um, I'd probably give a range. A range? Do they, okay. do they have a price for them? Yeah, he wants 880, but the last investor transaction comparable that I got in PropStream was in March 22. The cash sale was for 650, and I'm confused because the Zestimate says 550, and PropStream says the value is 700. So, I mean, it's probably all over the board then. Um, so what was his price? 880. 80. So you gotta go lower than that. You know that. Yeah. Okay, so it's okay to set expectations on the phone, how huh? like a range. Yeah, that's probably gonna be your best one. Make sure it works. Got it. And I have a another pre foreclosure that's like twenty seven days from auction date. Is that still something that might be safe? The owner's eighty one years old, man, and I met Get with him yesterday. Get it locked up in two days, and you probably can. You say what? Get it locked up in two days, and you probably possibly can. I talked to your title company and ask specifically. Okay, I'll do that. And then. I went to the courthouse yesterday and I got the PR's info for probates, but I didn't get the deceased property address. Is that normal or? Did you get the decedent? The decedent? Uh, yeah, I got the family members and the Search PR's them. name and address. Wait, so did you get the decedent though, the person that passed away? Yeah, yeah. So just search them up on the property appraiser. Oh, okay. I was doing that earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I wasn't. I was down. Yeah, so you're good, man. Okay. It's easier when the, when the address is on there, but sometimes it's not. You can't okay. win them all, bro. <laughs> yeah, yesterday what I did is just do, did the true people search and I found the addresses in PropStream. So perfect. I got the name. And last one. Um, Sorry, I have the same situation actually where you, you got the uh, pre foreclosure and probate combined. And the son was like, the mortgage company is not accepting his payments for the when when his mom died due to um I don't know what the reason is is that normal that's not normal uh they got to ask i mean between you and me we do a lot of i do a lot of subject twos i do a lot of um payments and i do a lot of just taking over people's mortgages the bank wants their money that's the only thing they care about so he probably did it the wrong way that's my best guess but you got to figure out why you got to get a reason they they're they're going to have to give you a reason why it's not acceptable I rarely have a bank say, we don't like where you gave us the money, you know? So yeah, it's kind of strange, right? <laughs> you ask him why there's, he probably did it the wrong way. Okay. Yeah. So, um, is, but, uh, isn't probate right now and the son has a, a pre foreclosure lawyer and a probate lawyer. I mean, is there a way to get this property in, co in contract in that situation or yeah. Okay. I have a lawyer. I can still contract things. Okay, perfect. And uh, last one for probate. I have a um, certain PRs that is in other countries. How do you guys go about it? In Canada and uh, one in the Philippines. Canada, I, I can probably email them. Email? The Philippines is weird. See if they're on Facebook. Yeah, I, I saw the Facebook. I actually direct message. It's really the best one, man. Honestly. Okay. And email. Okay, perfect. That's everything, man. Appreciate you. Thank you. All right. Have a good one, bro. You too, man. Have Boom. Sosa. Yo, is that what's going on? I'm blessed, bro. What's up? Nothing. Just chilling, man. Just chilling. I got some good news, though. Remember the deal right. you um, told me what to go back and say? Yeah. I basically said exactly what you got to say. And I, I got it locked. It's basically locked up. Um, It's, it's three hairs, two on sign. Everybody all together. They just waiting on the last one to sign. But um, so this is what my question is, because... I know this a um I know this a big one and I'm thinking about closing it on, on my myself, but I'm trying to think. So basically it's it's gonna be a gut job. And I already know like we say, you know, focus on the um whole side and things like that. But I was thinking about because my last deal that I did, even though it's in a um different state, the buyer the buyer profited. I mean, yeah, the buyer profited like like one thirty on the flip. And this one I got low. Oh, yeah. And only made like, I mean, you know how we do it, but I made like 15 off of that one, but the buyer profit like 130. So this Good one, for him. 
Yeah, yeah. I, ain't, I, ain't, I don't care. It's all good. Probably wants to buy so, some more deals from you. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that's why every time I hit them up, they be they quit the answer and response. So that's why I good to send out good deals, definitely. So, but yeah, so this went, but um, I know a buyer who do basically gut jobs also. So what I was thinking about is um closing on it and seeing if he I want to go 50-50 with me on it. Like I'll close on it myself and I got some money for the um repairs. I mean, dude. Just because one deal made 130 doesn't mean the next one's going to make it. And that's a very rare exception. Yeah. And do you, did you know how much you put renovations on that property? Um, talking about the, the, the one that I was just speaking on. Yeah. The one that made 130. She, um, she put like, like 50 or 60. So it was a 180 spread. What you. So like, was it bought for a hundred and sold for 230? And then no, that's why you think it was 130. No, I know for a fact because I I sold it to her for like one. I sold it to her for like one thirty. She put like sixty in it, so that's like two. Um, that's like one ninety. But it sold. I seen when it sold on the MLS, it sold for like three something. Wow. So that's how I know it exactly so far. And before that, I asked her what to do to repairs because that's how I kind of know what she gonna be buying for. But this one, the one we talking about, I got for thirty. I locked it up for the own um, 30, like you said. It's a 3-1. And I know you said wood and um vinyl kind of like the same, but pretty similar. It's one, yeah, it's one that's flipped in the neighborhood for like 280. Okay. And I and I figure and and just running your numbers, even if this is a gut job, uh, I say about 60, 70 and repairs. And I got a nice, I'm not going to put all of it because I'm, I'm doing it, but the buyer do jobs like these. And so he'll pretty much just be like, you know, the source of it, but I'm willing to, and I'm only 30, 30 minutes away from the deal too. So I can go there if possible. I mean, dude, but, usually I, I say no to buying a property yourself right now, but 30 grand so cheap. Uh, that's what I was saying. And like the market like, has uh, there's yeah. no loss. Because even if I don't do that with him, I can still just throw it on the MLS. And get more than what I paid, what I own, got for it. So I figured. How much like, does he think it's worth? Huh? How much would he pay you if you just wholesaled it to him? Did he tell you yet? On the buyer that I'm talking about. Yeah. The un to be honest, we had kind of already went. He basically do like what I do, and he kind of had to help me out with something. Like basically, he like I I pretty much lock him up for the same price as you, so we probably wouldn't own. Um, Probably wouldn't buy some deals, but he do do the creative finance. He told me if I find any subject tools or creative finance, so we can work like that. But he 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 buy gut properties and he fix them. But he is, he, is he a dude that I know? Um, he kind of. I don't know if he. Out there I probably like, don't know him then. Um, yeah, I don't think he out there like that, but I know for a no. fact because we be going to the meetings out here. Like the me is like so he he really be buying and he really be flipping. Okay. I mean, what I want you to do is, I want you. Is it vacant? Yeah, it's vacant, bro. You should just bring five buyers through and see what prices they're at on it. Yeah, and figure out okay, and just kind of do the math. You know, right, I can make twenty five k if I just wholesale it, right? Yeah, and if I put it on the market, I can make forty k, right? Yeah, but the thing is, since you're splitting, you got to figure it out that 40k is actually gonna be 20, not 25. So you're gonna have to do that math in your head. Usually, when you split it and you put it on the market, it's not worth it. If you do what it all do you yourself, then sure. And put it on the market. What? What do you mean by split and put it on the market? You say you're gonna do 50 50, right? Someone no, if you buy it. That's only if we flip it. If we do a flip, I'm doing 50 50. If I wholesale, I'm wholesaling myself. Yeah, no, that. See, you got to figure it out what what's worth it. Right? Yeah. Is it worth putting on the market and splitting it with somebody? Or is it worth it to just wholesale it yourself? And that's something you got to decide for yourself. Now, there's a lot of deals that it's worth it for me to put on the market, but I only do it with myself. I, I don't split it. With, I mean, I split it with Rick, but we're partners. But like. But I never did a flip, though. And then not only that, it's a gut. 
So that's that's the only reason why I figure out yeah. bringing bringing. Him I'm gonna there. say no on the. I'm gonna say no on just closing this yourself because the the gut and the risk and all. It's gonna take you away from actually wholesaling. Yeah. Since it's vacant, I just bring as many buyers as you can. Just go with the highest one that would be decent for you. It's just wholesaling. Yeah, that'd be my guess. All right, all right, all right. Another thing too on. Um... So on docket sign. Like it has my LLC, but when I sign, it puts my real name. I ain't never have a problem with that to this 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 one, but they basically had to look me up and they said it didn't look too good because I gotta, you know, come from a different background or whatever the case is. But the only thing that saved me with them is cause they called the attorney and the attorney let them know like everything's on um, legit. But I never had nobody look me up. What's so, the problem with you? I mean, you know, I basically just got charges. Like, it ain't no, okay. like, no stealing or nothing like that. But they say they just look. I don't even know what they seen, but they say whatever they looked up and it looked too good. That's the first time it happened. But I'm trying to see how can I, like, get my name off of, um, off of the document. Like, when you sign DocuSign, do it put your company in your, in your real name? I put my name on it. But, I mean, so let's just be honest, man. If you got charges, no judging, no, no big deal, right? Uh, but, like... If you do your time, you do your time, right? Like, whatever. Um, I get to, I'll, I'll give you one example, all right? I, I'll give you one example. And I'm not, I'm not calling anyone out, but there is some prominent real estate wholesalers that have fake names. And mm -hmm. because they have some really bad charges, they don't want you guys knowing about it. So they legally changed their name or their name wasn't good enough and they have, they have some pretty decent charges. And they legally changed their name like 15 years, years ago or 10 years ago. And they go by this completely different name. And when, when you look up their new sexy name, you know, their charges pop up. But if you look up their old name, yeah, you get everything everywhere. So it might be worth it for you to do a name change and nothing crazy, but like might be a good, it might be a decent thing for you to do. Um, just being honest, if oh, that's like something that's going to be a concern whole, for you. Like changing my, my government name? Yes. Yeah, I mean, and the thing is, it's like, I mean, it's not no crazy charges or nothing like that. It's just basically like entrepreneurship type of deals. You feel me? But like I said, they was the only person that did it. But I, like I told them, like, I'm like, everybody made a bad decision in their life. I mean, hey, man, Don't like, change it. Like, I'm just telling you, that's that's what some people do, yeah. and you know, there's people that you know they they get charged with like I don't know dealing drugs or something like that. Right. And it's sometimes not a good look when you're trying to, if people look you up yeah. and so they'll change it. Right. Just a little bit, like maybe in the first name, maybe the second name, whatever it is. But like, um, sometimes you have to do that. If you have to legally sign something, that's, it's a big concern. Um, I see people do that. And I mean, I don't do it. Rick doesn't do that, but I see a lot of actual real estate wholesalers that you see online. A shockingly amount of people do that. Yeah. And that's because people send me mug shots on uh, Facebook DMs and messengers. I'm like, whoa, who's this? Yeah. Like, who's this guy? And I'm like, oh, that's this guy's clean name. And uh, it's just kind of funny. But like, I actually thought about it. I'm like, that's actually a smart thing to do. You know, like if you're going to do it. So th it's just something to think about, you know. Um, yeah. I don't think it lose the deal. You have a real attorney. Uh, but yeah. Yeah, like I said, they already own, like I said, they're the only person that did it. But when I told them and they, and they spoke with the attorney everything, like I say, everybody signed. They just went on the one person. He said he just want to look over it and things like that. But I know this is a good deal. And I was just like, in case anything else ever come up, like, should I um, do something like that? Cause like I said, I ain't never had a problem with it. I ain't even really worrying about hiding my stuff because it ain't nothing, you know, like that. But, I mean, some people do like that certain stuff different. Yeah. If you want for the attorney, it'll, it'll be crazy because it's like, you know, but. Yeah, I, I wouldn't put a different name on the docu sign that legally isn't yours. Just oh, in no, case I'm you have to go in court. Oh yeah, no, I'm a, yeah, no, I'm I'm gonna keep that. They already signed. Like I said, I'm just one of the other I was thinking just for like uh another situation. I would put the LLC's name and then just sign it. And then whatever your name is, you know how signatures are. You can't read someone's name off a signature if they're like, you know, like that. Yeah, I know. See, 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 in, in person, in person, I just do the LLCs like go in person, but when I send them in docu sign. It do the LLC and it do the name. 
which I say like I ain't on no license. Like Spirit's just trying to hide it. But since how about, how about they sign the thing about this? How about they sign the DocuSign and then you print it and then you sign yours yeah. on the LLC? Oh, well, like I said, I wasn't nothing trying to hide it because I already showed it to them and they already talked to the attorney. I would just, I'll probably just think of that even like just on the next one. Like they good, but I was just really thinking on it for the next one. Yeah, just try it for the next one. That's probably what I do. All right, and another thing, I had got the um, I had got the the um fire the fire damage list, but I got it from like a smaller city, and when I got it for the thirty days, um, they ain't had no problem with sending it to me or seem like nothing like that. But they only sent one property, so I'm wondering how far should I go back? Cause I was just like, can I get um any fire damage property for the last thirty days? No problem. We'll email it to you, like just the file. Yeah. One property. Past thir- I always do the past thirty days. So even if so, whatever just pop up for the past thirty days, just go with it. Yep. All right. All right. So if they say one, you got like so. There's, you only there's one, one house went on fire the past thirty days here. Shocker, right? <laughs> yeah, that's what I was kind of thinking. Like, so I just no. tell okay, but I'm gonna ask that the college is like okay because it seemed like they want not have no problem with giving me. But I'm like, so really, just one property. But that's what I see. And look what I got though. Okay. Look at that. Go for no. I like it. <laughs> yeah. I like this, though. And I love this, too. It's definitely what you're saying. They be already trying to say and stuff because it's already in the book. Like, I like this book, though. It definitely um, it definitely opened it up, though. Because I seen something. I kind of got stuck with it. You'll hit your goal, and then you'll be good. But if you hit your goal and you're still looking for more no's, you could go past it. Yeah. It really makes no sense. But, um, all right, so... Even if I, so you saying don't close it, don't close on it at all. Even if I just put it on the MLS or, or just bring the buyers through. I'd just bring the buyers would, through. I'd, I would just wholesale it. If it's a gut job, I think it's too risky, man. I don't, I don't close on gut jobs myself. It's yeah. not worth it for me. Okay. All right. Well, yo, well, that's what I, well, I just go ahead and get a um, big book for it. Cause sometimes I put the on um, MLS or I can listen on the MLS in agreement, but this time I ain't really do it. Cause they was, cause and that's why you do got to talk with the um, decision making stuff, because he the one he was saying he was all controlling stuff. But then he the one I built all the all the report with the dude with the four men I was telling you about. So he was really ready to go, but he referring the message back to the hires and stuff. So, but I say like the other two are already signed. But if it was just him, we'll already be good to go. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, I basically got a lot done. This went on the last doing. So yeah, I'm gonna just I'm gonna just wholesale it though. I know um I know I can get some buyers for it. All right. Go after it, man. And that was from the um doing reverse, like you say. So that was from a reverse job for dollars. <laughs> Dude, it works, man. I t- I'm telling you, bro, yeah. it works. But um, why? Well, yeah, appreciate. It. I keep you updated on that. Oh, in the right. Walker deal, I had to. I, I canceled it. The, the, the numbers work, but the agent wouldn't come down for what I had my own buyers at. But I just got out of that quick though. But this one going through. All right, man. Um, well, can't win them all, but. Hey, when one door closes, another one opens, man. Yeah, definitely, definitely. All right, I appreciate that, though, Zach. Keep it up, bro. Yep. Boom. Awesome. Yeah, guys. Um, I would consider it, you know, if, if you have a record and you think it's going to stop you, some people change their names. Um, but honestly, like, hey, if you served your time, you did what you had to do, um, it, it, it's not going to stop you from being successful in wholesaling, right? And um, you know, don't do whatever got you in trouble and always do the right legal ethical thing. Um, but like some people are different, right? Like some person, ten, if something happened to you 15, 20 years and you're a completely different person, you still got out here, still wholesale, right? Like it's a lot of people that I'm, I'm not promoting any of this, but like a lot of people are ex felons, uh, went to prison that got into wholesaling, changed their lives. Right. Um, and they made their lives a lot better. And so like, there, there's no shame in becoming a better person. And as long as you're doing what is right and is legal and good, go after it. Right. And putting your efforts into wholesaling versus something bad, put it into wholesaling. It's great. So, all right, Tony. Yo, Tony. what's up, Zach? What's up? Not much, man. Um, I don't have any questions right now. So you can just uh, skip me though. All right. I'm what happened to that code watching. violation? Huh? Oh, that code, code violation. violation? Um, he flaked on me. I kept calling him, kept calling Bro. him, and no answer. 
Come on. But that's something I'm going to just keep following up on, like, every two weeks, though. All right. Yeah. Like, I messaged him a couple times. I called him, left voicemails, but it was weird. He answered the first two times, and after that, nothing just blank. <sighs> Whatever. But yeah, it's all right. I got I, that list I pulled. There's a lot, and I'm going to keep calling today, too. All right. Keep all right, it up, man. bro. Thank you, Zach. Thanks. All right. Boom. Carlos. Hey, Zach. I just had a quick question. All right. What's up? All right. So um, a big problem or, well, the main problem I've dealt with uh, when talking to uh, homeowners is like, let's say they have a distressed property. And even if they did want to sell it, the net profit would not be enough. Well, I, who am I to say that it wouldn't be enough? But that's what they say. They're like, oh, it's not enough to afford me new living accommodation. So my question is, um, typically, when an owner-occupied seller sells their property and I, I assign it, what options do they have with the money they acquire? Um, they can buy season tickets to the Dolphins. <laughs> <laughs> they can buy a golden toilet. They can buy a truck. They can do whatever. They, I, I don't, it's their money. Do whatever you want with it. Yeah, but like, wh where can they live? Where wh what new living? They can live in Ohio. They can live in California. They, wherever they want to live. It's not my problem. Yeah, I'm but buying like, your house. Uh, do you when when you have a seller and they're and they're living in a rundown house and they have IRS debt or lien. And, yeah. and you're helping them pay those liens off by selling off their house for cash. Do you not offer them suggestions on what they could do or where they could live after? No. No? Because my suggestions are different than your suggestions. I, I'm not an advisor. I, I don't live with them. I don't know what they want. I don't know what their needs are. It's not my job. My job is to buy somebody's properties for cash. What you oh, do whatever. with the money is up to you. Okay. So you don't worry about, oh, they sold me their house and now... They don't know where to live <laughs> or like if they don't know where they want to live, then I don't want to buy the house because they're not motivated enough. Oh. Motivated sellers are like, yeah, I already have a place. I already know what to do. It's oh, I, I see. Yeah, I understand now. So Sometimes someone you ask the question too, like if you're just trying to build rapport. But when someone says, oh, I don't have enough money with that. I'm like, well, list on the market to get more money if you want. Well, that won't be enough money either. Then they don't want to sell it. Then like don't sell it then. All right, yeah, that, that was pretty much my only question. So yeah, dude, real motivated sellers, they they don't have that problem. You yeah. Know? My favorite is when you're cold calling and someone says, Where would I go if you sold my if I sold my house? Buy another one, rent something out. Yeah, that's the know. objection. That's the objection I'm talking go about. Go live in a go live in a trailer home. I I, I go live in a mansion. I, I I don't if you want to sell your house, you'd put I always say this, well, Mr. Seller. Most people, when they sell their house, they usually buy another house yeah. or they go rent somewhere. Okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, that, that was my only question. And yeah, and I if get you that don't worry about it, then I, I won't worry about it either. <laughs> Whenever somebody says that, they just don't want to sell it. They're just trying to be smart with you. All right, man. Well, thank I you. Actually, so I like Zach. it when I hear that because then I'm like, all right, next one. <laughs> all right, Zach. Thanks. All right. Have a great one. Oh, all right. Next, who we got Nicholas. Yo. What's up? What's up? How you doing? Good. How are you? How can I help you out today? Well, I'm actually new to this. I've been kind of watching your videos and going through your course. And I'm just really trying to lock down my first deal, kind of possibly before the first, you know, beginning of the year or, you know, within that first week of the year. Well, let's find a deal and then we can lock it up after. Yeah. Um, my market is uh, Detroit. I'm in Michigan. So... From what I hear, it's a good market, and I, like I just Lincoln, watched your, I watched your uh probate video and pre foreclosure video, so I'm probably about to just try to find a deal on there first, and if I can't, then you know, just keep trying. Basically, how about what the advice snow would you give me? I didn't hear what you said. How about the snow? I I, I knew you guys got a snowstorm recently. Oh, uh, we don't even have any snow on the ground sticking. It, it Drive snows, for dollars, but then it notes. Drive for dollars. All right, I'm gonna start doing that today, then. Because, dude, it's you're gonna is once it starts snowing, it's gonna be a lot harder, you know. Yeah, 
I'm I'd rather do the probates uh, and then do the reverse drawing for dollars before it gets a complete mess. And since you probably live in Detroit, you, you know the areas that are just you go there and every property is going to be just dis disgusting. And though yeah. like you don't want to wholesale that, right? Right. What I have always found in Wayne County, and I'm giving you secrets, people are gonna be so mad. Cheap properties that are in lower crime areas are the best mix because you don't want to buy a property and it, get, it gets broken into and you're trying to renovate it, right? And so those were always the best. Like, because the landlords really like those areas and they're cheap, dude. You get property in a contract for 30, 40 grand and like the neighborhoods are not bad. Dude, it's perfect. A lot of them are like working class, you know, like where all the auto workers live and all like where a lot of working class people are. That's amazing. Okay. All right. I'm going to uh, drive in some areas today, try to get some luck down. Beautiful, man. That's going to be my best one. Then reverse. Are you going to reverse drive for dollars too? Uh, what's the difference? So there's drawing for dollars and then there's reverse drawing for dollars. Now, right. drawing for dollars is basically what you hear from everyone. Hey, I go in my car, I look for ugly looking houses. And then I maybe I have an app or maybe I just write their address down and then I get their phone number. I call them up. Hey, you know what's other house, right? Not bad. The other hand, reverse drawing for dollars is when you have a yellow sticky note and you're like, hey, this is Nick or Nicholas. I had a quick question about your property. Please give me a, a call back. And then you put the phone number. Usually Google uh, voice okay, number. Okay. And then you slap those on the properties instead. So you don't have to call them anymore and they'll call you instead. And okay. you have to get ahead of more people doing that. Okay, yeah, I'm going to do that too then. I'll go grab me a, a sticky notepad today. Awesome. Uh, that was it. I'm just trying to lock down the deal. I'll be watching your videos and stuff. So next time you go live, mm -hmm. I'll hop on. Hopefully I got a contract by then. Nicholas, next time you hop on next week, I want you to do 100 sticky notes. Then you can do okay, that? Okay, Yeah. 100. All right. Yep. You're good to go, man. All right. Now you have a goal. Keep it up, bro. Thank you. Boom. Jen says, I left sticky notes on every door of ugly houses I saw, and they all called back. Trust me, you get a lot of calls back from it. You get a lot. It works really well. Next here we got Scarlett. Okay, so hi, Zach. How are you? Hello. Um, I'm trying to figure out what the next step is in finding the probates. I'm guessing you do your skip tracing, right? And then you call or text them. Is that how that works? So the first part, I want to figure out if they, the person that passed away owns property. And then if they own property, then I'll skip trace them. I don't want to deal with someone that owns property. They own if they don't own property or the property is on market. Okay. And I skip those. Okay. Okay. Once you do that, you skip trace, you find their phone number. And then is it best to call them or text them? What's the best approach? Calling is going to be the best one. And then at the technically the best one is going to send a mailer out. So at freelancing.com, we have mailer templates you can send out. But those are like 45, 50 cents. So calling is going to be the cheapest one still. Okay. But down the line, sending a mailer out would be a good thing, right? Oh, yeah. They work really well. Uh, yeah. I actually have a quick story to tell you. I was doing this a long time ago and was sending mailers out and actually got somebody back to call me. It was a guy that lived right down the street from Mark Cuban in Dallas. And his house was worth seven million dollars i had no idea what i was doing and he ended up selling to someone else who bid higher and so if i knew what i was doing i probably would have gotten a pretty good deal so i know mailers work hey they yeah. work out um the next question and my last question is how do you since it's a si sensitive situation with probates i'm assuming they're you know pissed off angry sad whatever how do you approach them when you talk to them i mean it's grief, right? So like, it's tough. And right. I think most people watching this have unfortunately had a deal with something like that, right? And it's a tough situation. Right. The best way you can do is give them the utmost respect possible, right? So, you know, I, so we were like, hey, I saw this person pass away. I want to buy their house. That is not a good way to do it, right? <laughs> right. Like, you're going to get cursed out, angry, all this stuff. Now, right. I always just, I like to give people opportunities to get out of situations if they're uncomfortable, right? And that's right. just life in general, right? So like, you know, if someone's uncomfortable being somewhere, hey, we can just go somewhere else, right? So same thing with the seller. So, hey, Mr. Seller, are you the owner of this property and are you looking to sell it? Now, if somebody's really uncomfortable talking about this, hey, I'm not the owner, I don't want to deal. No big deal, right? Now, if they say, yes, I am the owner and I am interested in selling it, 
you just assume they're the owner. Just assume it. And if they don't want to talk about it or they're angry about it, you just get out of the situation, right? And that's always been the best one. It gives them a lot of respect because you just act like they're the owner and we don't have to talk about the decedent. We're just going to talk about the property. And if it's something you want to sell, we can kind of get more information from there. And then from there, if they're actually motivated, they're actually going to go say something like, well, actually, you know, I kind of own the property, but my uncle passed away. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. And they give you, they, they're the ones who are comfortable enough to tell you that. And once they feel comfortable saying that to you, and now it's kind of a trust that's got built. And now it's like, okay, they're comfortable with you in the situation. Well, what um, if they ask you like, well, how did you get my information? Well, I mean, my marketing you have to got it. Say, oh, so oh. pretty much what we do, Scarlett, is me and my partner, we're looking to buy properties in the area. And this was a decent area that we like. And we like buying properties there. So that's probably why we mailed out to you. Because okay. we're looking to buy properties in the area. And my partner actually bought a house whatever your cash buyer, half a mile from you. And he really likes this area. So that's why we're probably reaching out to you. We've probably find your information online. I know he has a service where he finds the areas he likes and then we get their number or, you know, we find their mailing address and we just send mail out to them. Okay. It's not because uh, it was a probate. Okay. One more question. Cause you made me think of it. The, the owner of the property is the deceased still, or is it is, so technically the owner of the property is the deceased person, but okay. you're, you're just playing stupid and assuming that the heir owns the property now, which they technically, they don't, but they control it. So, and they are going to eventually through the probate process. So you can still probably contract with them. So yeah, technically okay. they're the owner. that's my question. Can you assign a contract to the heir and not the deceased person? Yes. Okay. For most, so I'm assuming you're in Texas. Yes. So yes, most likely you can talk to the title company about it. Uh, just make sure they get stamp approval and everything. But yeah, most likely you can. Okay. That's all I got. All right. Just play stupid and make sure they're comfortable with it. And you should be. But yeah, sometimes I get asked that. And all you all I train my VAs to do is just say, hey, me and my partner, we're looking to buy property in the area. And that's why we're reaching out to you. Okay. And so they don't feel angry. Like some people get really upset that they know you're marketing for a probate, but they can't get upset if your part cash partner bought a house half a mile from you and he's looking right. to buy more in the area. Right. That's it. Right. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. All right. Have a good one. Keep it up. Boom. Awesome. All right. Next one. We got Justin. Yo, what's <laughs> happening, Zach? What's up, bro? How are you? Yeah, I'm pretty good. Um, I just got a question. I got in contact with a seller yesterday. He's interested in selling. Probably, I'm doing virtual now, but the property is in it's in Florida. Um, I just got a question about the. It's, he said it falls under the FEMA fifty percent rule. I'm a little familiar with that, but I'm not like a hundred percent on it. I just wanted, like, if you know any information about that, like how that works. Where in Florida? What you was that? West coast. West coast. Yeah, it's in the southwest. In Lee County. Okay. So uh so this is more of a southwest Florida thing. So uh let me look it up really quick just to make sure. I mean, we don't really get I mean it's kind of a Louisiana thing, but uh pretty much what it says 50% rule does dictates the future of hurricane damage in designated flood zones. Oh, it's in a flood zone. Yeah, it was damaged by the Ian. Oh, this is why. Okay. The federal rule prohibits repairs and improvements on damage exceeding 50% of the market value until the entire resident structure is brought up to the most current building codes. Okay. Yeah. I was speaking of buyer and I was, uh, and I was a little oh, confused this is new. about it. Jeez. Yeah. It prohibits the improvements of structures exceeding 50% of market value until um, it gets up to code. So it's probably really banged up. Yeah, he said he's got an appraiser coming out in like mid January, but he really wants to get rid of it. And I, it's, gonna, it's like it's like a little confusing though. But I, I yeah. can probably figure it out. So I told everybody it's usually six to twelve months once a natural disaster happens in Florida for you to start wholesaling it because they have to go through all this bureaucratic, you know, insurance tape. And so that's why I avoid it. That's why everyone says, oh, oh, there's a hurricane happen here. Or there's a tornado. I should go after that. No, wait like a year. That's when the money starts rolling in for it. Um, that's that's going to be your problem, dude. It's going to be hard for you to even get anything going. Yeah. 
I mean, he said he had all that insurance thing like dealt with. He's just waiting on the, the FEMA appraiser to come and see what the damages that's, is worth. That's still part of it. You got to wait for yeah, them. That's, and you that's know what the I'm waiting works. on. He's, he said they're coming in like mid-January. So I just got to wait. You're going to have to wait, bro. Yeah. Because he's going he's gonna to need that money. So it's going to be tough. Yeah, but he's looking to move. So I just got to see what he what's happening in January. Then that's all I could do. That's all you can do. Yeah. I work with a right, uh, title company. They can help you out with it too when you can actually close on it. Because right, with, yeah, with the FEMA work. rules, I'm not the biggest expert on it because there's been no major hurricane in my local market like since 2005. So I was like six. So unfortunately, yeah. I haven't really had to deal with that too much where I'm at. That's true. All right. All right. Well, you're the go questions. ahead. I can so. No, that was it. All right. Keep it up. All right. Appreciate it. Oh, all right. Yo. Yo, what's up, man? I'm doing good. How are you? Pretty good. So uh, I just started doing the tax delinquencies, and uh, I, know, I know it's not like the best time to do them, but uh, I'm just looking for, you know, more people to hit. So uh, I'm on the website, and I noticed that through the record search, it's not in the most convenient format. And uh, so 90% of it is like LLCs and, and companies and all that with their commercial properties. So it's difficult to search just by like, you know, individual owners. So I'm asking, how do you filter out to only see people that matter? So are the property types on there? Commercial residential? Uh, let me check. Hold on. Um, no, but every, you know, LLC or incorporated company is a, is a commercial property. So I'm trying not to waste my time on those. Yeah. So I'd get rid of those first and foremost. Uh, one thing I like doing is, um, do you use Google Sheets or Excel with this? Uh, yeah, I can. So put them all in there and then replace LLC with AAAAA LLC, then sort by first and last name. And then all the uh, AAAs are going to pop up and you just delete those out or okay, put them on another cool. section. And I, I know someone asked this like literally just a couple of days ago, but I forgot the answer already. If someone's tax delinquent by only like $50, do you still go for them? I believe the uh, answer was yes. Usually it's, they don't pay for the entire year. Yeah. So, I don't know. Some of the people on here are like 50 bucks. There's some 300 bucks, 200 bucks. Um, probably not. I, I like doing at least they didn't pay the tax bill. Yeah. And so if they missed a quarter, then maybe, but I, li I like a full year, a full year. Okay. All right, yeah. cool. That's all I got for now. Appreciate it, man. All right. Have a good one. Have a good one. Brandon. Hey, how you doing, man? I'm blessed. How are you? I'm blessed as well, man. Thanks for asking. Awesome. What's up? How can I help you out? Yeah, man. So, um, full transparency, man. I, I, I just started watching you, buddy. And, um, I, I almost got sucked into the guru trap. Um, and a friend of mine recommended me to you and I've been watching ever since over the past two days. So I haven't watched all your videos yet. So if I ask yeah. a question that's covered, please forgive me. <laughs> um, but basically I'm, I'm brand new. Uh, I've been in sales for my whole life. Right. And, um, I'm brand new to wholesaling or getting into real estate. And, um, I live in the Hampton roads area and I saw one of your videos, you had said that you love Hampton roads. Right. Um, so I'm excited about that part, but my question for you is, um, I'm going to be JVing with a friend that's already been in real estate for a while, um, wholesaling. And, um, you know, I'm going to, uh, this week, uh, I took off for a whole week and I'm going to be, um, working on getting started. Right. So, um, I'm planning on doing a, Podio account and a Mojo account. Um, he knows how to do all that stuff. But basically, I'll get to my question. My question is, if if you were brand new, just starting off, right, and uh, you had a week to get you know started, I, I work a full time job. I'm a data am analysis manager. Um, but if you have like a week to get started, is there anywhere like? Because I've I've already helped him like with the delinquent taxes, uh, uh, importing into like uh, Mojo. We've got delinquent taxes, code violations, but I was just watching your probate stuff with all that data, right? Is there anywhere where you would recommend someone that's newer, right? Getting started. I'm not afraid of cold calling. I was a manager of a call center for six years and not afraid of cold call. Um, so just curious your, your take on that for somebody brand new, getting started, where you would recommend to go. I know it's kind of a loaded question, but I thought I'd ask. Oh, you're going to be the easiest guy to talk to because you're, you understand data, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Smart. You call it data, not data. Does that, does yeah. that ever bother you? <laughs> More than you know. <laughs> More <laughs> than you know. All right. All right. So Hampton Roads, you already hit the lottery, bro. 
Um, the reason why that market works really well is because it has two huge things. First of all, I got the Virginia Beach, good economy there. Yep. And you got this massive military base, right? And so like you got a really good economy going there. Yeah. And there's cheap real estate, a lot of people, a lot of money exchanging hands. I love that area, right? So some cheap areas around that too. So first of all, welcome. And so remember, most of everything is in freeholding.com, but you don't yeah. have to learn everything instantly. Yeah. So we'll use this as an initial call to help you through. Most okay. of the time you got to pay five grand to get this, but I'm going to help you out. So Agreed. first thing you got to understand is there's thousands of people that have just probably started just like you right now, mm -hmm. and they're going to want to know, know what to do. So this is going to be a perfect talk for you because you're going to help thousands of people by just doing this. So shout out to you. Thanks, man. So first of all, you got to understand you are invited on here anytime you want to talk to me. Awesome. Now I will be on your, your butt. I'll probably yep. tell you stuff to do and say, get back to me after you do this. Yep. And so I will be not aggressive with it, but making sure you do it, what works. Now, that being said, you, I, I'm assuming you understand the wholesaling process roughly. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So you have a full-time job, I'm guessing 40 hours a week. <laughs> yeah, I wish. Uh, yeah. No, much more than that. Uh, probably 60 to 70, but that is going to change. Um, right. I'm rearranging my priorities. So. so looking at this, when I'm looking at data, I, I look at everything, right? And so there's, unfortunately for you, there's just so much information, right? You, right. There's a million lists, a million ways to, there's a million ways to get a deal. Like there's, the, the amount of ways to get a deal is insane. Unfortunately for you, money's not your issue. It's more of time than anything, correct? correct. Yes, absolutely. So what I have to look at when I'm looking at the data and I've had hundreds of thousands of wholesalers getting the first deal of data, right? Actually tens of thousands of people getting the first deal of data. I'm, I'm, I know what works and what doesn't. And for a lot of people. So yeah. what I've honestly seen is let's do the marketing strategies that give you the best bang for your buck, where when you spend an hour doing this, it gives you the best chance of getting a deal. Yeah. Not something where it's the biggest list because you don't have 40 hours to market. Right. Right. And honestly, what I've always found, especially in your area, because it's the snow's not insane. It's not rough. Um, the weather's not in, like treacherous, um, like crazy Northeast stuff. Reverse drawing for dollars and probates are going to be your best thing. Yeah. And specifically reverse drawing for dollars, ugly houses with drawing for dollars and then reverse drawing for dollars, government lists. Because yeah. what you got to understand is what is the best marketing strategy for your time? It's direct mail and direct mail is you sending postcards out 30, 40. It's a, it can get expensive. Like dude, I'm tens of thousands of dollars a month in my direct mail, but I get leads coming to me. And it's amazing because I don't have to spend hours cold calling, skip tracing, all this stuff. I just send mail out. They come to me. Now, you probably don't want to spend five grand a month in direct mail, right? Starting out. Probably, right. not, the, probably not the best thing to do, right? Right. Yeah. So that's out of the table. But that would be nice, right? You get, you know, let's say you get four calls a day and they all want to sell their house and they all go into the appointment and it's not that big, big of a deal. What's the second best option that's not going to cost us five grand? It might be cost us 200 bucks reverse drawing for dollars. And you're going to get very comfortable sticky notes. So yep. sticky notes is going to be your best bet. So you're going to, first of all, drive around your neighborhoods and drive around areas that cash buyers like. And at freelancing.com, I'll show you how to do that. And you're yep. going to look for ugly houses, right? Within a good range, not high crime areas, but decent houses where cash buyers are looking to buy. They usually have a couple zip codes that are really good for house slipping and rentals. Find an ugly house. You're going to write it. Hey, this is Brandon on the sticky note. Hey, this is Brandon. A quick question about your property. Please give me a call back because you're a data guy. You know this. Once you put some, you pique someone's interest, you probably have a 40% chance someone's going to call you back. Right. On that card. And if someone slapped on your house, you'd be like, who called me? Let me call them. Right. Yeah. And so if I have 500 drawing for dollars leads, if you get 40% of them to call you back, that is roughly, you're getting a hold of 200 people with ugly houses. That's pretty good. Yeah. Now you're the data guy. So roughly it takes about 500 drawing for dollars leads to call them to get one deal. Okay. 500 to get one deal statistically. So okay. if I call 500, I skip trace them. I call them. I'm most likely only going to reach a quarter of them. So 500 uh, for a quarter, that's 125. That's 125 conversations usually lead to one deal. Now what's 40, if I get uh, 40, if 40% 40 of the conversations off of 500, that's 200, right? Right. So I just increased my conversations by um, 60%.
So that's pretty dang good. Yeah. And it's that's much, and so much that, more efficient. <laughs> so that means 500 in a month, right? That's all you're really going to need. Maybe let's call it 600 in a month. Okay. 600 in a month is going to be, let's say, you're, you can drive for dollars. Let's say one, two, three, four, four, eight days. All right. Saturday, Sunday. You get 75 on those days, which honestly is going to be maybe a couple hours. So that's going to be about three hours a week of marketing. And you're going to spend the other two hours a week, appointments, cash buyers, things. So about five, 10 hours a week of work, which okay. I think you can manage. Yes. And that's yes. going to be the best chance of your success. Okay. And so looking at everything with the time you have, the constraint, you're smart, you know. So you're smart, dude. You, like your time's not best spent cold calling five hours a day, right? right. Like that's, it seems like you know sales, you know how to talk to sellers, right? Yeah. So your time's best spent people calling you and you talking to them and qualifying. You're better spent on an appointment talking to somebody than just calling random people. So that's probably be my best thing that's going to keep the your uh, your sanity. Gotcha. We also just to kind of throw this out there. So the um, the friend that I'm going to be JVing with, um, he's been wholesaling for quite a while. He has a VA um, already, and he's already got leads coming in the pipeline. And one of the things he wanted me to do, I, I'm I've been a top salesperson everywhere I've gone, right? So I know how to close deals. That was the other portion of it that I'm going to be doing. Um, so that's one of the things we're going to be keeping in the pipeline as well. Um, so I'm, I'm excited to watch your stuff, man. Um, you know, just kudos to you too, man. I, I, you could obviously be making a lot of money <laughs> doing what you're doing, uh, just doing this portion of it. Um, but you're giving it away for free, man. And you're serving, you're serving people, man. And I, I greatly appreciate it. It's really, uh, it's awesome that you're doing that. And I promise you this when, not if, when I become successful in this, I promise to pay it forward, man, and do the same. So thanks for everything you're doing, buddy. Dude. Do you know how many people with a full-time job we've been able to transition to wholesaling? It's awesome. A lot. A lot. And that's kind of what, why I do it, right? And yeah. so you, you'll probably connect with Rick's story a little better than mine. He was a manager uh, working 60, 70 hours a week, wholesaling on the side until he was able to get enough money and jump ship. And he had a family, all this crazy stuff. Uh, so that's he's got a really cool story. I think you can really connect with it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you do what you got to do, man. Um, but the VA would be good. If he knows what's working, Kind of do what he's doing too, but I would add yeah. reverse drawing for, for dollars on top of that because most people aren't doing that and it works really well. Yeah. What I said to him too, because you know, he was like, Hey, look, we've already got all this stuff. But what I said to him is like, look, man, everything I've ever done, the way you become most successful at it is you gotta get in the trenches and you gotta do it yourself first. You gotta learn it to be able to teach somebody, right? So that was part of it. That's why I have a week off. I took a week off literally to just dedicate my entire week to this. Um, so I'm excited to do that. I wrote down everything you said. Um, and, uh, I just really appreciate you taking the time to do this, man is in, in Hampton roads to your knowledge is getting probate, uh, lists and things like that. Pretty, pretty easy. Have you, have you ever done that in this area? I know three guys making over half a million dollars in Hampton roads, just in that market virtually. Yeah. And they like the probates and they're going to get really upset that I told you that. <laughs> it's all good, man. We share the love, man. So, it's, there's a lot yeah. of guys making a lot of money there. That's why I talk about it. That Richmond. Virginia Beach is decent. Right? Yeah. It's a great market, dude. Yeah, I was born and raised here, man. So I know the I know the market very or the area very well. So hey man, I don't I don't want to hog all the time. I want other people to be able to get some questions. But um, Zach, I appreciate you, man. I'm gonna follow you and uh you'll 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 remember my name and you'll see it up there. I, I'm gonna start crushing it, man. So I appreciate your help. All right, get it going, man. Take it easy, buddy. Boom. Guys, that's how it started out. Um, if I had a full time job, I, I still think it's hands down the best one. Because it's literally direct mail and drawing for dollars at the same time. It's the best. Shallon. Hey, can you hear me? Loud and clear. Is it Shallon or Shalon? It's Shalon. Shalon. All right. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Okay. I have a question. So I had, I got close to a deal, but um, it went south. <clears throat> but um, I got, my nerves kind of got to me when, uh, we were talking about the title and closing and things like that. When you're going to a closing, can you do it to where everyone goes separately or do I have to be there? You can do it separately. So each, so the seller can go separately, the buyer. I like the buyer actually signing before everyone else. Right. Okay. But it can be done separately. Like how would you orchestrate that? Like, 
Yeah. So I'll give you an example. We had a closing last week. Seller came in at 11 a.m. Buyer came in at 9. And I came in at 10 just to sign it. Okay. So Thanks everybody, so everybody's appointments like a different time. Yeah. And I don't, I didn't really even have to go there, but I just wanted to pick up a check. <clears throat> okay. And then I had another question. Um, when you're talking to the seller, um, is it, I'm not sure I heard you can, and then maybe you shouldn't. Should you talk to them about assigning the contract to some, uh, if it's okay that you the assign seller? the contract? The seller or the buyer? The seller. No, I don't ever mention it. You don't ever mention assigning it to the buy anyone else. No, because you're working with your partner on it between you okay. and the partner, which is your cash buyer. Okay. All right. And I'm right now I'm in Hillsborough County, Florida. Are you familiar with that area? I love Tampa. Yeah. I am having a little bit of a hard time here. I think I'm gonna um I was doing um some pulling some um i was i was doing zillow for sale by owner and i'm not i'm not even sure if that's a good um if those are actually good leads or not they're good leads but it's too saturated there's too many people calling them too many okay yes yeah, so i think i'm gonna uh, go back to driving for dollars because i'm here part-time in the winter and then i'm in uh georgia uh Where in georgia summer. um atlanta uh, Cobb County. I was watching you try to pull the Cobb County leads. And, uh, Everyone from Atlanta drives me crazy. You're not from Atlanta. You're from this city, like 45 minutes from Atlanta. <laughs> it's completely different. But no, mm, yes and no. Atlanta is, it's. It's its Cobb. own thing. But like there's everyone within two hours from Atlanta says they're from Atlanta. And like, it's a different real estate market, you know? Um, no, but I'm not far from Midtown. I'm, I'm right there. It takes me like 15 minutes to get downtown. I had a guy from Auburn, Georgia, tell me he's from Atlanta. I'm like that. No, I, no, that's you not. You've got 12,000 people living in your city. Stop it. <laughs> um, no, no, I know you're close enough, right? Like you're, you're close enough, but I'm, I'm just joking. Um, the, the, uh, Cobb County is way better. Hands down. Yeah. It's not, even, it's not even a thought in my mind. Yeah. Um, so what Cobb County for the for um for wholesaling? Oh yeah. Okay. The, and here's another thing that kind of got me a little shook. The prices, every the people who are selling or the motivated sellers, when they are motivated, their prices, the numbers kind of scare me. The prices are so high. They want like 350 for something that needs at least a hundred thousand, you know, repairs. I mean, honestly. Maybe it maybe it's worth three hundred, and if they want the most for the house, they should just go list it with a realtor. Right now, if you want to actually find good deals, you're gonna to have to find a list of people that actually want to sell their house. Yeah. So kind of why I made the video today: probates and pre foreclosures. They need to sell it. They can't mm -hmm. dilly dally all day and just get whatever they want. I mean, probates kind of, but like you're gonna to have to go if you want motivated sellers, go after a motivated list. Mm -hmm. Okay. And if you want to get. Uh, if you don't like saturation, deal with a list that you can't buy for dollars. <throat> so are you in uh, Tampa Metro or in like Pinellas? Like where? Um, I'm new to Tampa. I just, we got here and we ended up in <laughs> Sun City Center. Like, okay. Really? It's come to find out is the like retirement area. Yeah. Okay. Not far from um, Brandon Riverview. So that's, that's a little better. Like the, yeah. you're, you're out East. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'm not I'm not too sure about these streets and driving for dollars, but I know of the Atlanta metro area okay, very very well. Of, all right, you're south. Yeah. So you're kind of by um a decent um I think Brandon's probably gonna be a better area for you. That's probably where you should be looking for wholesaling. Mhm. Mm That's probably your best one. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Even Plant City. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's probably what I do. Okay. And um, are there any, now, are there any, I'm not sure about the rules out here on, because I saw, I did see a YouTube video of someone saying that you can't wholesale in Florida, but you can, but there's so many rules and so many different stipulations on it. I, I would be in jail. 
six years ago for it. <laughs> All right. Rick would be in jail 20 years ago. Like, let's be honest. I have a lawyer at every closing I do. And these are hundreds of closings every year for me and my company. Lawyers are writing it all for me. They're doing the deeds. They're doing the closings. They own the title company. It's all legal. Whoever said that needs to just quit. All right. Like, yeah. Well, she was a realtor and she was she's like, a realtor. yeah, <laughs> they're just trying to stop you from wholesaling. And if I've never had one lawyer told me, no, it's not, you're fine. Mm -hmm. You're good. Okay. All right. I would have been arrested a long time ago <laughs> for wholesaling. Okay. Okay. Well, um, I think my questions, but thanks a lot for getting to me. I appreciate it. And I'm going to go ahead and do those uh, post-its and start doing the driving for dollars. Hopefully I think I'll have more luck with that. Okay. Yeah. Go try to find good areas. I think that Brandon Val Rico area is decent. That's okay. kind of a little east, right? Um, that area you're at, do that. That's fine. And then maybe Bradenton if you're around there too. Decent mm -hmm. areas. Uh, yeah. But yeah, those are probably going to be your best bet for success. Okay. Okay, great. All right. Well, thanks a lot. All right. Thank mm -hmm. you. Have a great Bye. one. Bye. All right. Let's see. We got Alan really quick. Alan. Hi, Zach. Good afternoon. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing perfect. Thank you. Um, just, I'm working right now and watching your videos really motivated, um, ready to go on. I have a couple of questions for you. All right, let's hear it. So um, I watched your, the, the, 30, the 30 day challenge on, on, the, on the website and I watch all your videos and um, I, still, I still don't know how to find leads online because I live in a pretty saturated market here in California. And Where? I'm driving for dollars and I'm walking and driving my bike too around the city um there is four different counties in here where i live so where? I, mean, I live in the bay area okay we're in the bay yeah. area um san jose okay yeah yikes that's a rough remark yeah. <laughs> it's super rough in here i was hoping to like oakland or something but all right <laughs> i went to the court uh to the courthouse multiple times requested a violation code uh, probate list but they they rejected me uh, a couple times a hundred times and i just decided to do it online and hopefully yeah, I, I would i would virtually wholesale if i were you yeah um and now I, I was thinking doing 50 50 like you recommend 50 here in my market and 50 online i think that's not a bad thing to do man yeah um but my question is how can i get more leads online how can i start searching the leads online Find a fifty. Find the other virtual market and do what I just did in the beginning of this video: probates, pre foreclosures, liens, and then go from there and do it like that. That is true. You opened my mind. That you opened my mind. Open your mind, and it will open your bank account. That is true, Zach. Thank you very much. Um, Appreciate I'm it. I'm gonna start doing this. That's that was my only question. If All right, I well, have if you... any more questions, I reach out to you. Thank you for okay. giving me a time. Of course, Alan. If you have a problem pulling into the list, you hop back on. I'll help you out. Sounds good, Zach. Thank you very much. And also, thank you to your dad. I hope you guys have a very good Christmas. Oh, of course we are. All right, guys. eat as much food as I can. I appreciate it. <laughs> have a good one. Have thank a great you. One. All right. Bye. All right. Guys, y'all know the vibes. I'm helping you guys for free. Pre foreclosures, probates. If you got anything through your head today, it's to pull these leads. These leads will give you money. Either you pull the pre foreclosures and probates. Or someone in your market will and they'll get a deal. Who wants it? The money's there. These deals, the money, like there's, tw there's a 25K check right there. Do you want it or is somebody else going to get it? It's, it's your choice. Whoever gets to it first wins. So you got to choose it. Like, hey, do I, want the, do I want the bag or do I not want the bag? I think y'all want the bag, right? So go after it, take action, and pull it. I promise you it is worth it. The work is worth it. I think so many wholesalers are like, oh, is it worth it? Is the work? The work is always worth it. The hard work, do it. Do it the right way. Everything we teach at freewholesaling.com, but the hard work is worth it. Go after it. I promise you. Go after it and do the do the work that's not sexy or the most fun thing in the world, but it'll lead you to wholesaling real estate success. And that's the point today. So guys, make sure you guys hit that like button, subscribe. 
Go below to freewholesaling.com, my free real estate wholesaling course, where I teach you everything you need to know about wholesaling real estate absolutely for free so you can have the best success possible in your wholesaling real estate business and you can learn how to pull amazing government lists for free. Uh, so freewholesaling.com, I'll be live tomorrow by myself and then I'll be live on Friday by myself too. So that'd be pretty cool. And I'll go help you uh, guys out, everything you need to know about wholesaling real estate. And uh, I think that's pretty much it. So guys, go to freewholesaling.com, hit that like button, subscribe, and I'll see you guys soon. And uh, make sure you guys go to freewholesaling.com. See you guys. Appreciate it. Have a blessed